I'm going to explain some basics of meiosis for you. I'm not going to draw out everything because there's an animation that I'll show you that'll do a much better job with it. But the point is, every diagram you see in your textbook will not have all the chromosomes drawn. So we're going to try to, at least for the first image, draw all the chromosomes in. So here's a, a cell. Let's make our nucleus rather large. And remember that the diploid number for humans is 46, which means that there's a total of 46 chromosomes. 23 of them came from your father, and 23 of them came from your mother. And there are matching ones, so uh, let's use blue and pink. So here we go. Uh, 23 chromosomes from the father. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. And then we also need 23 chromosomes from the mother. Now these are just randomly dispersed everywhere. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Now, if you count the number of strands right now, the total number is 46 chromosomes. And that is the diploid number. In order to produce sperm cells and egg cells, we have to somehow divide this number in half. Here's the most confusing thing for students, is that sometime during interphase, each of these chromosomes is going to become replicated to turn into a pair of sister chromatids. But that does not mean we're increasing the number of chromosomes. We are simply increasing the total strands of chromatids, if you will. So uh, what would that look like? Well, each one of these will turn into something like this. But these are still, I still count this molecule as one chromosome. That's not two chromosomes. That's one chromosome consisting of two sister chromatids. So I'm going to go ahead and do this to every one of these right here. Oh, is that one? I hope that's one. Anyways, we should now have still uh, 23 chromosomes from the father, each one consisting of a pair of sister chromatids. And the same is going to happen for the mother's. Uh oh. The mother's chromosomes that you inherited. All right. All right, look at that mess. Okay, no wonder textbooks don't include diagrams like this, but you need to be able to see this and understand the whole thing. Now, this is still a diploid cell. There are still 46 chromosomes in here, but each one consists of two sister chromatids. Now, if this were a regular body cell undergoing mitosis, all of these would just line up in the center, and then the sister chromatids would split, and then we'd have the exact same number of chromosomes, which is 46. But in meiosis, something uh, a little funkier happens. So I'm going to switch over to a little animation here. So let's take a look over here. We can compare mitosis and meiosis. This is visible. This is visible. Okay. So if you take a look, there's mitosis, there's meiosis. In the beginning, everything looks the same. Then we get to prophase. Now look there's immediately a difference between mitosis and meiosis. Uh, prophase 1, already, look at this, it makes sense. The homologous chromosomes, in other words, each one of these, the 23 from your father, are going to uh, match up somehow with 23 from your mother. So there's a homologous chromosome, and they're, they're kind of linked up by size. So for example, I could say, which is the homologous chromosome to this one from the dad? Well, it's probably not going to be this one because it's too big but anyways if I drew this more carefully so I could say maybe this is the homologous chromosome so they're gonna actually find each other they're gonna find each other in the beginning of meiosis and so that's what's happening here you can see that in the diagram and once they found each other you can read over here but crossing over has happened and they're forming chiasmata they're exchanging genetic information that is key prophase one meiosis homologous, chrom homologous chromosomes find each other and they cross over and uh, exchange genetic information. Mitosis, this should be easy by comparison. They're just moving towards the center uh, in metaphase. But here, look at, notice the difference between metaphase, the first metaphase of meiosis and metaphase of mitosis. They are lining up along the equator, this metaphase plate, uh, but they're lining up in homologous pairs. Take a look at that, okay? Key difference, homologous pairs lining up. Anaphase. Mitosis is pretty much done. Anaphase 1, the homologous chromosomes are separated, but the sister chromatids are still intact. There we go. We're at the end. Now notice, let me go back really quick here. 
notice if I were to count, okay, the number of chromosomes that are going to be over here in mitosis, that's one, two, three, four. But when this cell splits, look at the number of chromosomes that are going to be here. It's one and two. Remember, this is still counted as one chromosome. So from this first division, I've already halved the number of chromosomes that are there. This will have four chromosomes. This is already halved to two chromosomes. So there's only two chromosomes here and two chromosomes here. There's four here and four here. Well, that's the original number, so we're, we're starting to see the point. Meiosis must divide once more time, one more time, oh my gosh. Now these uh, chromosomes are going to move again. We have the same thing happening, except now this looks like anaphase of mitosis. The sister chromatids are now going to split and count the number here. This cell is going to have two chromosomes. This cell is going to have two, two, and two. Then each one is going to be gen genetically, uh, genetically unique, sorry, genetically unique from each other. So that's four different cells. So we have accomplished that. So we filled out a table in class, but these are the main differences. Meiosis, from one cell, you're going to end up with four cells. Each one is going to have half the amount of genetic information as the original cell. In mitosis, from one cell, you end up with two cells, and each one has the exact same number of chromosomes uh, from the beginning. So once again, the only thing that really makes this confusing for students is understanding that this, as a chromosome, is still called a chromosome when it's replicated like this, okay? So that is still one chromosome. If you remember that that's the case, well, all of this shouldn't be too difficult to understand. All right, good luck. Have fun. All right.